good, you're here. Welcome to the Masterminding Success Podcast. They say if you want to be successful in business and in life, then surround yourself with successful people. So pull up a seat. The Mastermind is about to begin. Hey, glad you could join us for another episode of the Masterminding Success Podcast. We're your host, Keith Wheeler. And Nuria Corby. And what are we talking about today, Nuria? Today, we're going to talk about work and life balance. How do we manage to, to balance the two things together? How do you manage, Keith? Um, it's it's an ever-growing uh, uh, thing that I have to keep thinking about. Um, it, it definitely has to be something done intentionally. Um, it's, it's very easy to get burnt out if you don't have that balance. Uh, that's one of, the, one of the many things I see people that start in any kind of business and then they they just kind of give up, especially if they're working, you know, doing online when you you know you don't have a boss breathing down your neck or anything. It's a lot easier to 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 go to one extreme or the other. Either dive, you know, full you know full force into whatever the topic is or whatever you're working on, um, or to just be like, ah, I'll deal with that tomorrow and be more lackadaisical about it, and then you don't see the success that you're looking for. So. Yeah, work-life balance is definitely difficult. It is difficult. And I think it depends on each each person's situation, really. Right. I mean, everybody is different. We're all different. We all have different uh, lives as well. So mm -hmm. so some of us will find it a lot easier than others to, to balance that. And I think Something I read on Facebook the other day was um, I didn't want to do the nine to five. So I started my own business and now I do 24 seven. So I think that true. is, yeah, there is a lot of truth in that. And when I first started working for myself, when I wasn't working for somebody else, I went all in. And it was that kind of thing where you, you think that when you're running your own business, you're your own boss and you can do whatever you want. And that is not the case. That's not how I felt. I felt like I had to do more than than before because any moment I had free, I thought I'll work on my business. So, so my whole life started revolving around my business, really. And it's not a bad thing, but you have to be careful that you don't take it to an extreme, I think. Right. And in my case, it got easier after some time. I think at the beginning when you're building your business, you don't know what to prioritize normally. You, you're still learning. Right. And as time goes on, I learned to prioritize what was important, what isn't so important. And like you said earlier, you have to kind of um, be mindful of it and, and work for that balance, you know, and, and know that there, there has to be a balance. Um, it can't all be business, business, work, work, work. It, it has to be uh, the family, the, your partner, your children, whatever or whoever is in your life has to to feature as well, not just your business. So, right. yeah, it's difficult, but I feel like I've got it. Um, it's in it's at a manageable place at the moment. What about you? Do you think you're managing it? Yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, I first of all, it's just to be clear for me at least, work life balance doesn't necessarily mean it's fifty fifty. You know, it's just the, the key to me to a work life balance is that neither one, neither your your job nor your family, friends, whatever your life, um, neither one is being neglected. I think mm -hmm. that's that's the, the best definition for me. And so um, I've it, it just like with you, it took a while. It took a while to to kind of because when you're first starting out you've got that fear in the back of your mind to have to go back to full-time job working for, you know, somebody else. And so because of that, that, that fear kind of dr drives you to, you know, work hard and, and anytime you have some free time, you know, put it into, into the business. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely gotten better over the years. Um, you know, I, I mean, it, it would not only, even when I was not physically working on something, I'd be talking about it, uh, you know, to friends and family and, and here's a shocker. Not everybody cares, you know, <laughs> <laughs> not many you know, do. No. you know, you know, not, not everybody cares about your book or whatever, you know, it's, you know, they, they care about you, you know, if they're, they're your friends and family. And so they, they may be really nice and, and act like they're listening or whatever, but 
yeah, they don't necessarily care. So uh, it was definitely taking up e all of my life. Like even when I was with my friends and family, that's still majority of what I was talking about was either books or YouTube or whatever. So um, it definitely, it definitely takes some work. And, and I think what you said, you know, prioritizing is really key, you know, prioritizing what we like to say, what moves the needle, you know, and because it, it, you can, you can spend a lot of time and energy focused on something that at the end of the day is not going to positively affect your business at all. And so it's, it's being able to recognize those things, which, you know, a lot of times just that does come with, with time, unless you're, you know, you listen to one of our other podcasts and you, and you have a mastermind where you can mastermind with other people uh, in, in that same area that can kind of give you tips as far as, you know, what, what for them moves the needle and what doesn't, what they, you know, what you should focus on. Yeah, definitely. I think in my case, it's even, it's more difficult to balance um, my work and life because I enjoy it so much. I yeah. really enjoy this business. So I, I'd rather be doing this than anything else. Sometimes, obviously there are other things and, and the worst part about this is my husband has joined me now in this. So we're both doing it together. So we both enjoy it and we spend a lot of time together just doing the business. But so I don't have that problem of um, if I had small children, for example, I would obviously have to look after them and right. see to their needs. Even my daughter is now doing what we're doing. And, you know, so I can talk to her about it as well. So my whole life pretty much revolves around what I'm doing. And people in my life also are involved in this. So I think my situation is slightly different to, to the norm, I think. But I do have a few tips for people who who are wondering how would they um, balance it. And and I kind of have to think of before when before I did this, I had other businesses and my children were smaller. So right. I did have those problems and I know how hard that is. And uh, a good way to do it is obviously to work around your children. If they're if they're really young, I had to work when they were asleep or when they were at school or whether when they were at kindergarten, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, now that they're older, what really helped me in my situation is that, first of all, my husband and I have a, a meeting every week or so where we go over what we need to do, what we have to prioritize. And because I have somebody to bounce ideas off, that really helps. And if you haven't got anyone in your family or your or friends that you can do that with, do it in a Facebook group, do it, you know, connect with other people that are doing something similar to what you are doing and, and do that. So you have an accountability partner almost. Right. That really helps. And the other thing that um, that really helped me was to have a schedule. The minute I put that in place, everything was so much easier. And what I did is I I found hours in the day that I had to to work on my business. So I left uh, time slots for for lunch, for dinner, for breakfast, and then also breaks in between because it's not a good idea to to work right. for two or three hours at a stretch on something. It's better to to kind of have little breaks. And uh, once I had the skeleton in place, the timetable then I could allocate the things that were important. So I analyzed all the things that were, as you said, shifting the needle, you know, that those are the things that matter the most. And then there are other things that don't really matter so much, but I always felt like, oh, I have to do this. And then I thought about it and thought, I don't really have to do oh, it. It's okay. not affecting the business in a positive way. So those things I then eliminated and I really started to concentrate on the things that push the business forward. That was a real life changer for me. That really helped. So that's a tip for anybody. And it doesn't matter if you haven't got much time. You can work. You can do that for an hour a day. If you're working full time and you finish at five o'clock or whatever, takes you an hour to get home, you have something to eat. You could say to yourself, OK, I'm going to dedicate an hour or two hours after work to my online business so and then you make your plan according to that time slot 
that's how I do it anyway. So do you, would you find that is a, a helpful way to, to do it? Do you do something similar? Yeah, I, I'm really big on, on to-do lists and, and yes. schedules and things like that. So um, yeah, that's definitely, uh, that's definitely one of the, one of the main things that have helped me um, not just not just be successful in my business, but to um, to really be able to tangibly see, you know, what what's working and what's not is, you know, by looking at that schedule and 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 having the mindset is, you know, when I look at each particular item and say, you know, is this is yeah, they're all work and they're all things that quote need to be done, but you know, is is this busy work or is it something like we said that's going to actually you know benefit the business? And, um, you know, and, and there are things that, that benefit the business, but is it something I need to do now? You know, like, you know, let's just say, you know, updating your website, you know, or, or, re, you know, if maybe it's a little outdated, do, okay, great. That's something that's, that's going to be quite time consuming if you're going to do it yourself. And so then it's a matter of it is, is it workable as it is now, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, is that something that could be put off to do something else? And I, now, uh, I'm not saying to procrastinate and put something off just for the sake of putting it off. You know, it, it really comes down to how important it is to your business and to, again, you know, bringing in customers, bringing in eyeballs, whatever, because that's going to make a big difference in, in your business. And so that's how, you know, I'll have a list of, you know, my to-do list of all the things that need to be done. And then I move things around depending on what is the highest priority, like what has to be done, what, and, and I like to use that to go back to the work-life balance, what has to be done before I can say I'm done for the day and I can go play with my grandkids or I can go out, you know, to dinner with my wife. And so that using that as kind of a gauge as far as like what absolutely has to be done, um, really, you know, it's something tangible, something I can look at because it's also helpful in that there's been days where I just like, you know, back when I first started the end of the day, I've been, you know, at my desk for, you know, eight, 10 hours, you know, yeah, I take breaks in between, but, but still in general, eight to 10 hours. And, and I don't feel like I've accomplished anything. And so that can be very, um, you know, destructive as far as your mindset is. So the thing I found about the to-do list, and that's actually why I first started doing it is because I can see something tangible. I, oh, I did accomplish all of this. Some of them may be things that only took me five minutes to do, but it's still something I did. And so that, you know, that definitely helped with, you know, you know, getting those endorphin rushes, you know, the, the excitement that that's right. That's one more thing off the list. And, uh, and, and if something doesn't get done, as long as it's not, you know, a number one priority, then it can just wait till tomorrow. And that's another way that, that helps me to step away when it's time to step away. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. You know, if something doesn't get done, you can still do it later. You know, that's that's a really I mean, I'm in that situation at the moment. We're selling our house. We've got we want to move. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on that's nothing to do with the business, but that is affecting our business because right. I have to keep postponing things. And the one thing that I've realized is that actually it doesn't matter as much as I thought it would. <laughs> you know, it's it's always like you said, you can do it tomorrow. You can, right. you know, so but that is because I'm at a stage at my in my business where I can allow myself to do that. It's all kind of ticking over very nicely mm -hmm. at the moment. So when you're building a business, that is sometimes not the case, and you're still right. having to, to, to really work at it to to get to that. And what you said earlier about your to do lists, that is a, a fantastic tip for anyone as well, because with a to do list, you've got your priorities listed there. Um, and for example, this morning, I was going to work on one of my websites, and it was down, and I couldn't do anything. And then I had to write to the host and say, you know, my website's down with you know, could, could you look into it? So I was, I wasted or what I thought was I wasted my whole morning on that. But in the meantime, I did things that were on my to-do list anyway, the things lower down on my list. So it's all about managing things that, that might not happen in the way that you were planning to do them. 
and and working with it, working with each situation that comes up and finding other ways to do it, alternative ways or doing something else. And, um, and like you say, as long as it moves the needle forward or it moves it at all, it's um, right. it's a good thing. So, yeah, it's yeah. I was going to say, this is great. <laughs> you, you brought up a, a, a really good point. You know, it's um, things are things are going to happen. You know, mm-hmm. things are not going to go smoothly. And um, it, it's really it's really good to have like a to do list or whatever you want to call it yeah. to to focus on, because it, if you're getting things done again, not not busy work, you know, things that are actually, you know, going to affect your business. But it's very easy if you had a plan for the day and something happens to throw a monkey wrench in that. It's very easy to be to say that, OK, well, my my day's just shot. I'll just go do whatever instead instead of saying, okay, what else can I do? I can't do this, but what can I do? You know, maybe I can, I can focus on that website that I've been putting off for two months. Maybe I can, you know, work on project B instead of project A. So it's very easy to get deterred and we need to, to keep in mind, especially with online business, that many things that, that, affects our business we don't necessarily have full control over you know like you said like like you know servers being down or whatever you know you don't have control of that so it's important to to your work-life balance to uh, to find the things that that you that do that you do have control over you know and and being able to pivot like that because otherwise you're about ba- you know the balance is going to be off you're going to be spending more time doing stuff that's not helping your business at all you know, going hanging out at the pool or whatever, which that's great. That's fun, but that's not helping your business. And so what that means is either later on, you're going to be working more because you have to make up for it or your business isn't going to succeed. And so, you know, being able to, to pivot when, when things go wrong, because they are going to, whether it's a physical business and, you know, your, your, you know, electricity's out or whatever, you know, things that you don't have control over, that's going to happen. And so being, having a list of things to do, things to work on, whatever that relates to your business, that's going to help your business that you can quickly pivot from one to the other. And that's just, um, I, I think part of that, if you, if you don't have something like this podcast to tell you about it are things that you learn the hard way, which is what happened to me. You know I mean? There, there are many, many months you know, if I strung everything together, maybe even years where I wasted time doing stuff that either wasn't helpful at all, or wasn't, you know, it wasn't what I planned on. So I just went and did something else. You know, I went and like I said, go to the pool or hang out with, you know, the family or whatever, which I mean, I I love doing, but that's not helping my business. And so then the next day I end up working, you know, 12 hours to make up for it which isn't helping the family, you know? And so it really comes down to, to, to having a plan, I think is the best way to put it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And also it's not all about the business because it's a a work life balance. So life is coming into it as well. And the one thing I would say is that when it's coming, when it, when it gets to, to health problems, for example, because that's going to happen as well, that, Mm -hmm. you know, It's either you can have a health issue or someone in your family can have a health issue. And those things happen in an unplanned, unforeseen way. And then you have to deal with that on top of your business. And what I would say for those occasions is whatever it is, if it's health related, make that a priority. You know, that it doesn't matter whether the business suffers or not, because if your health isn't where it should be, the business will suffer anyway. So exactly. you really need to sort that out and make that your number one priority. Um, there's no question about that. That is the one thing that I would say takes priority over everything else, you know, your your family, your health, that is the main thing. So I wouldn't feel guilty at all if that was, you know, you feel bad about it if you have to postpone something because, mm-hmm. you know, of, of a health issue. But it's it's necessary. It, it it really is the one thing you shouldn't feel guilty about. I and, agree. Um, yeah, I'm sure 
I'm sure we all agree on that. Um, but sometimes we try and push ourselves, which is not a good idea, because like you said at, at the beginning, burnout is is real and it's very easy to get burned out. And I think we've all had it at one point yeah. or another. So, yeah, that's that's the main thing. Take breaks as well so that your health is taken care of or, or is um, given the best chance anyway, especially your mental health, because that gets affected quite a lot when you run your own business. So it's it's one of those things. It is hard to to have that work life balance but in time you you get better at it i think so yeah i'm a pro now <laughs> <laughs> um yeah and and then another thing that can help with the work life balance is um, and this really depends on where your business is you know yeah. as far as you know is it up and running is it um, you know are you seeing success do you have a little bit of um, extra funds to where you can outsource certain elements, you know, uh, that way your, your business is still progressing, but doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, if, if you're not really enjoying doing that website, you know, updating it, can you hire somebody to do it for you? You know, mm -hmm. it, it'll take up less of your time because you're not dealing with it. All you have to do is kind of tell them what you're looking for and it's still getting done, but not by you. So again, you've got that work-life balance. And so outsourcing is definitely a possibility, you know, again, depending on, on your funds, but, um, but I mean, you can get, depending on what the project is, you can get fairly inexpensive um, freelancers to help you with pretty much anything, any part of your business. And it's a, a good idea to, to create work for somebody else as well. Mm -hmm. I, I like that about this business that you're kind of able to give back as well that the bigger we get, the more we can pay other people to do things. And that kind of keeps that cycle going of somebody else having a customer for their business. Um, but that is one of the things, and, and this is what it comes back to what I said at the beginning, depending on the kind of person that you are, it's easier or harder. In my case, I find it really hard to outsource anything because I want to do everything myself. Yeah. I just want to be in control of it all. and And that is something that I need to learn as well because as my business grows of course I will have to um, let others do some of the work for me that is the hardest thing I think that's another topic for another podcast <laughs> because yeah. um, delegating is one of those things that I find hard to do but but yes that would help and if you're the type of person who has an easy time delegating it then do it because that is um, that's a good thing it's it's beneficial for both parties, I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I know some people who delegate like 90% of their business, you know, and then yeah. other people who, who you know, like you just don't feel comfortable doing it. No. And, <laughs> you know, and, and either way is fine. You know, it's again, it's a matter of, you know, I mean, it also helps that, that your work-life balance is a little easier because your, you know, much of your life is part of your work, you know, your, your husband, your yeah. daughter, yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm on the other spectrum where uh, nobody cares, you know, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I mean, they care obviously, but, but, you know, I, you know, I'll talk about my books or whatever. And my, my oldest son, you know, he writes books as well. And uh, even after a while, he's like, all right, dad, can we talk about something else? And uh -oh. so, um, and See so, yeah, that. I'm like, you know, and, and he and I, we, we, joke around about a lot of stuff. So, you know, we've got plenty of stuff in common, but, um, but yeah, so, I mean, I, I don't have that, that aspect. So I do delegate things out and, and hire out. Um, so I have more time to spend with my family. So yeah, um, yeah it's, I mean, and, and especially if you're doing online, you know, if you're doing an online business, it's a lot easier to, to hire somebody and, you know, and, and get, get those kind of resources done because it can be done from anywhere. It doesn't have to be done from your city or whatever, you know, as, as opposed to if you have like a physical business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's on my list. I mean, I know what it was like when I didn't have other people interested. You're absolutely right. Nobody's interested if they're not doing it themselves. Mm. It's one of those things that, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm talking 
if I talk about my business to people who are not involved, it's boring for them. Was I'm all excited right. about it? I think, right. guess what I did today? <laughs> And I think that was the nice thing about my husband joining me, obviously, was because now we're both um, involved in it. We're doing it together, which is brilliant, you know, but that doesn't work for everybody. Some right. people would rather maybe not that their husband or their wives yeah, work yeah, with them. They want their own. Like yeah, they want their own yeah, space. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. So it just depends on on your life, how it's set up and uh, make it work for yourself, you know, make it fit in with your life. And uh, rather than your life fitting in with your business, try and fit in the business around your life. It's possible. I've, I did it that way. And if anybody's hearing a funny sound, that's my cat. <laughs> She's she wants yeah. her food. Yeah. yeah. And and I mean, and, and just to be clear, you know, when I, I jokingly said no one cares. Um, it, it's more, I guess, a, a better way to put that is no one can, you know, they can't relate, you know, and they if you don't relate, relate yes. then you really, then it's, it's uncomfortable to, to, for someone to be talking about something that you can't relate to, because you don't feel like you can, you can partake in that conversation, really, like, you don't yeah. feel like you can add anything to it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I jokingly say that nobody cares, but, but obviously they do. It's just, they, like I said, they, they don't, they can't relate, you know, they can't relate to the YouTube yeah. videos. They can't relate to, you know, the books, you know, with the exception, yeah. like I said, my son. Um, but, um, but yeah, but again, it, I agree with you that, that um, I definitely put more on the work-life balance more to the family than to the work. And again, I think what you said earlier is true, which is, you know, early on in your business, it's, it's probably going to be the other way around. Um, but, you know, and while I, I can say that me having that mindset where I was focusing more on work, you know, definitely helped my business, you know, it, it also comes at a price, you know? And so you, you know, either, you know, mentally, you just get physically tired, you know, relationship wise or whatever. So you really need to, um, to be mindful of how much time you spend um, on your business. And uh, again, I don't think that, um, you know, you should go all in, in either way, you know, because neither one's going to be healthy for, uh, for both, you know, you're, you're, yeah. I mean, you're, it's, it's called the balance for a reason, right? I mean, yeah, Absolutely. I can, I can, I can ignore the business and, and I am like, you know, like you said, I'm at that point in my business where I, you know, I, I can take a whole week off of work. I mean, uh, matter of fact, uh, um, a, a couple of years ago, I took a whole month off of work and mm -hmm. my work really didn't, wasn't affected. I mean, obviously I, I didn't get any more books published in that time, but as far as like the revenue coming in really didn't, you know, didn't change the, the good side is it didn't go down. The bad side is, well, it didn't go up either, you know? Yeah. And so, um, you know, it, it does come down to where you are in your business life cycle. That's right. And, and it also helps that ours is a passive income now. So, if you're in a kind of business where it's sales driven and you have to get those sales in to get money, you can't just take a month off, of course. When when I first started my business, obviously I had to have an income coming in mm -hmm. and that doesn't happen from the beginning straight off. It takes time to, to develop. And at, in those times, I think it was really, there was no life work balance. It was just work, right. work, work all the time. And you have to kind of give yourself a, a time scale for that because that's it's not sustainable long term. And I remember I gave myself a year. I thought if this doesn't work out within a year, I'll do something else. And that was actually when I started the blogging side of things. And halfway through that year, I discovered Amazon KDP and then that took off. So I don't know what would have happened if I hadn't found Amazon KDP. Would the blogging have taken off? I don't know if it would or not, how to say when right. you know, when I left halfway through. But what I would say to people in that situation is give yourself a time scale and don't give up before that time scale is, is ended because not giving up is important as well. But as soon as it affects your health, then you have to kind of um, rethink the whole situation. Always put your health first. But at the beginning, when you're first starting a business, yes, it is a lot of work and the work-life balance does suffer. Um, and that's why it's good to have a, 
a sort of cutoff point where you say, well, if this isn't working, this isn't good for me, I will try something else. Or maybe uh, what I thought at the time is I would go back to, to a nine to five job if this doesn't mm -hmm. work out. Luckily, it did work out, but you just never know what can happen in life. So, yeah. yeah, it's definitely important to look after your health, to balance it as much as possible, but also be aware that there's different stages where you can't balance it as well as in now. For example, I can I can balance it because I'm getting that passive income that I created from the hard work at the beginning. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's everybody will have a different situation and you just have to work with what you have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, another thing that people, uh, many people do, especially nowadays is they do these side businesses as a side hustle, you know? And so that makes that work-life balance even harder because you, you might be doing a nine to five job and then, yeah. then you're coming home to do your, your side hustle. So you're spending more time work than, you know, than your life. And so that's something to keep in mind as well. Yeah. But I agree that that having a timeline and and even not just like, you know, a year or whatever, but but even within the day, you know, like you were saying earlier, you know, give yourself, you know, two hours a day or whatever, whatever time you can allot to your business without it affecting your life. Mm -hmm. You know, just know that, I mean, obviously, if you're only spending two hours a day on it, it's going to take longer for, you know, in, in general for you to start seeing that success that you want than if you're spending eight hours working on it. And so, you know, not that there's either one is right or wrong. It's just going in there knowing and having that mindset of expectations of, you know, what can I accomplish in this time frame? You know, what, you know, what is going to, how is it going to affect my business? And again, having those priorities is super important because you can spend two hours on absolutely nothing important or you can spend two hours on something that's really going to make a difference. Yeah, so true. I mean, in a, in a way, if you just have two hours, you kind of have to condense everything more and you have to prioritize even more. If you have all day, you can allow yourself a little bit of time to, to do things that might not move the needle as much as, as the other things. But if you have limited time, then you really have to make sure that you prioritize your your business as much as you can um, because you've only got those two hours. But in no way does that mean you can't succeed. You can. Mm -hmm. you, know, you just have to focus more and you've got more of a workload because obviously you are working as well as creating your business. But that's what you know, that's how it starts and it doesn't right. go on forever. You'll soon find out if it's going to work for you or not. And uh, it's important to be flexible and to work with each situation as it, as it comes as well. Yeah. Yeah. I, I find that with these, with the side hustles, one of the the downsides I've seen, we could do a whole nother episode on this, but um, mm -hmm. is it, it, I think it's really important to do what you did and set that time frame as far as like, you know, give it a year or whatever, because I find it very easy because people are only doing it um, in, in small chunks, you know, two hours a day or whatever that they, and they don't see the success that they see in commercials on YouTube or, you know, somebody else that they're friends with on Facebook. They don't see that the, the success that they're seeing, because maybe those people have more time to put into it, then they just jump to the next one. And, you know, it's, it's very easy to get, you know, we, we covered shiny object syndrome before, but it's very easy to, to get that same mindset with business ideas, you know, and, and I'm not against having multiple businesses. That, that's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is it's it, as hard as the work-life balance is, it's even harder if you're trying to do three or four different, you know, businesses, you know, you know, focus on one get it to where you want it to be. And then you can start working on the other, which is what Absolutely. I did with the, you know, the, yeah. the YouTube channel and the books mm -hmm. and, and everything else that I'm working on. So um, yeah. it, it's really, it's very easy to, you know, if you're only putting in two hours a day, you know, you do that for, you know, three months and you're like, I'm, I'm not making any money. It's not, you know, it's not worth it. Let me just try something else when it could, it could end up being very successful yeah. But I mean, if you're only doing two hours a day, you know, five, you know, five days a week, that's only, you know, 10 hours a week, you know, and you're doing it for three months, that's really not a lot of time that you put into it to, no. to just give up on it. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think thinking back to my situation, if I had, I said to myself when I was blogging, I'll give myself a year and it was halfway through, it still wasn't working to the extent that I wanted it to work. And I found KDP and now I could have said, okay, I won't start KDP. I'll finish and see what happens with the blog. Who knows what could have happened Mm -hmm. there, but I kind of pivoted to KDP because something told me that was more my thing. And I was able to allow myself that because I wasn't doing anything else. I wasn't, I did have a little part-time job that I was was doing from home as well, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't sustaining me either. So I needed to find something and I thought, right, I'm going to try this. So if you don't have the time to do that, then obviously you have to see through what you, you know, the plan that you had initially and see if that works. Um, It just depends on your situation again, you know, and on how you feel about it. And if you think that that is an opportunity that that sounds good to you, then go for it. If you have doubts, then maybe, you know, maybe it's not for you. I was just kind of something told me that try it. This is something... Again, I mean, there is no formula that, that you can follow to success. You know, I get a lot of people sometimes when I publish my income reports on YouTube, for example, and they kind of email me and they say, I've been doing this for a month and I'm still not earning what you what you are earning. I hardly get any earning at all. And I say to myself, well, you've been doing it for a month. This is what I'm earning now is the accumulation of years of of working you know maybe only it took me about a year to get to a point where I was where I could give up my work and and do this full time but that was a year and it I don't just count that year I count the two or three years before that where that were leading up to this Mm -hmm. because I feel like I learned a lot of things during those years that are now that I'm now applying to this business so it's not something you can do quickly, definitely not. And it's something that takes time. So you have to be prepared for that, I think. Right. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. They're not prepared to to wait that long or they can't wait that long, you know. So that's the problem. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I completely agree. I, I get those messages too, you know, where they're like, yeah. you know, they, they, they see somebody and and they think that they're, you know, like a get rich quick and they're like, you know, they're, they're successful. And you, you've talked about this numerous times in the different mm-hmm. episodes, but you know, you're just going by what you're seeing, not by all the work that was put behind the scenes, you know, like, yeah. you know, they'll ask me about my books and I'm like, I've, I've been writing books for years. I've been, you know, publishing since on KDP since 2016. I mean, it's, you know, it, it hasn't necessarily been like an overnight success, you know I mean? It, yeah. it, it takes work, you know? And so, yeah, I completely see where you're coming from with that. Mm. Well, this has been another great mastermind area. Once again, a huge thank you to all our listeners and viewers who came to tag along. If you enjoyed today's mastermind, please consider following or subscribing to the podcast and maybe even leaving us a review. It would mean the world to us until next week. I'm Keith Wheeler. And I'm Nuria Corby. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining the Mastermind today. Be sure to follow the podcast on your platform of choice and tell a friend who would enjoy it too. Your support is greatly appreciated. This has been the Masterminding Success Podcast.